Welcome to the second episode of Marketing Makes Modeling. I'm super excited for this lesson because what we're going to do is we're going to dive in uh, and make our hands dirty with Excel. So as we know, the first procedure, the first step for Marketing Makes Model framework is to centralize everything and then to start measure. Now, uh, once we centralize everything with the same framework as I explained in the past episode, like first column time frame, second column output variable, and then input variables in the following columns, what we want to do, what we want to do, is start an exploration phase. So um, what we're going to do is create a new sheet, call it exploration, and as and this phase is one of the most important phase of all the marketing mix model procedure. In this phase, actually, we see with our eyes, we try to understand what are our hypothesis about what are what, what is influencing sales. We're gonna dive in into what's driving traffic, what's what's driving sales, and we'll see what's uh, the correlation between these variables. So we can understand better what we're talking about and what are the main drivers for, for this project. So let's dive in. Um, we're going to create a time series first. So let's create, insert a new graph on Excel. I want to have a time series. Uh, let's select the entire data set here. Perfect. Okay. So right now we have, I'm going to remove, this is how much we spend by each week, as we can see. I'm going to copy and paste this graph to put it one on top of the other. And I'm going to remove all this variable, input variable, and I'm going to just add sales in the Y axis. Perfect. So let's begin our exploration phase. So we have three input variables. And as we can see, it's Facebook ads, TV ads, how much we spend on these channels and how much we spend on radio. Starting from Facebook ads, we can see that there is a common trend on sales with Facebook ads spent. I mean, if we spend a lot, we get peaks that we can see here in week 18. Week 18, we have a peak on budget spent on Facebook ads, which is 20. $281 and we have maximum historical sales in week 18. So I can say visually that there is a correlation, a pretty good correlation between Facebook ads and sales. So we will dive in into uh, the TV, which is the red one. And we will try to see if there is a correlation between week five, there is a downward spike week five, it's, there's not downward spike. Uh, let's see, in this day, week 13. Week 13, there is a down, we spent a little more on TV. There is a downward spike on week 13, which is weird. So I would say that there is not a clear correlation between a TV and rate and sales. Then let's dive in into uh, radio sale, radio spent and sales. This is a positive spike. Week six, week six, we have a downward spike. Hmm. Okay, let's go to the new positive spike on radio spent. Week six, 60, 17, we have a downward spike on week 17 about sales. So it looks like there is a negative correlation between these two variables. I mean, we, we were gonna we we're gonna figure it out. So we're gonna use the function correlation in order to to understand uh, numerically what's the correlation between these variables. So I would say uh, this is sales, and here I would type Facebook ads, uh, TV, and radio. Gonna use function correlation. I'm going to go to raw data. I'm going to get the first output variable here, comma, the input variable 
as a second member. Close parenthesis. Okay. We have a 78% correlation, which is really, really high. Let's do the same thing. Correlation, row data, uh, sales as the output variable, comma, TV. Close parenthesis. We have a 43% correlation on TV. Let's do the same thing. Correlation between output variable and radio. Let's go. Close parenthesis. We have 14%, which is really low correlation between radio and sales. All right. So right now, what, what, I'm, what I want to discover is um, visually, if I want to create a time series, I want to see how much sales increase depending on volume spent. I'm going to create a scatter plot. Uh, yeah, I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to make my, my life easier. So I'm going to get this, make it a little shorter. Double click. Time uh, X axis will be Facebook spent. Ooh, sorry, Facebook spent. And in the Y axis will be sales. I'm going to use a scatter plot to describe it. As we can see, there is a clear correl positive correlation between these two metrics. When we spend $100, we get around 10 sales. When we spend $200, we get around 18 sales. Let's see if there are diminishing returns that we can actually figure it out. So let's do personalized Siri and uh, one trend line. Perfect. In order to understand what's um, what's the R square, what's the accuracy with of this trend line, I'm going to use R square. And in this case, if we use a linear uh, type of trend line, we have a 62% R square, which is accuracy almost. And I would say let's see if a trend line as a power function works better. Yes, it works better. As we can see, the R square increased from 60% to 72%. And this diminishing returns curve is pretty clear. So this is actually how the how is the response of Facebook ads depending on how much we spend on Facebook ads. Let's do the same thing for the other channels. Copy, paste. Oh, sorry. Copy, paste. Let's do TV. TV. All right. So as we can see, there is a really low R square because in here, after 30 euros, there is a drop and an upward trend. Doesn't make a lot of sense for, for this trend line. So, but this is, this is actually the average that it's, it's getting. Obviously it's influenced on how much, how many, how much we spend on, on, on Facebook ads. Let's do the same thing with, um, with radio. Okay. Let's do radio on the X axis and, oh, wow. R square is really low. So probably uh, my hypothesis after this first exploration phase, I would say that uh, radio probably doesn't have any impact at all on overall sales. It has a really low correlation, 14%, and an R square of 8.3%, which is really, really low. <laughs> all right. So we discovered how to do the first phase on how to do a simple exploration phase. What we're going to do the next episode is um, start modeling and start testing our hypothesis. So we're going to dive into the learning algorithm we're going to use, and we're going to test our hypothesis, and we're going to use statistical metrics in order to validate our hypothesis or not. So uh, let's see in the next episode. And yeah, I mean, the learning algorithm will, will be used to predict the future. So see you in the next episode.